In this tutorial, we're going to look at editing our movie files on OS X. I have a folder with all the movie files which I rendered from the image sequences as described in the other tutorial. I'm going to use iMovie which comes free with any Apple computer and can be found in the Applications folder. When iMovie launches, you will be presented with the iMovie user interface. On the right hand side, we have a preview window which will show you any of the footage in your timeline. On the left hand side, we have the timeline window. And along the bottom, we have the window where your movie files will be stored. To bring your movie files into iMovie, go to the top and choose File import movies then navigate to the folder which contains your movie files at the bottom under the settings go to optimize video and choose full original size this is because we want to keep the movie at the exact same size as the movie files which were created Underneath, choose Copy Files. Then choose Import. iMovie will then ask you if you want to import all the files inside the folder. Click OK. iMovie will then import the files into iMovie. This might take a while depending on how many movie files you have in the folder. Once iMovie has finished importing the movie files, you will see them in the bottom window. You can move your mouse over the clips and scrub through them. To choose a clip that you want to add to your timeline, you can go to the clip and using your mouse, right click, or if you have a single button mouse, press control click and you can choose select entire clip this will put a yellow box around the clip that you want to choose you can then drag this up and into the timeline when a clip is added to the timeline you can still move your mouse over the clip to scrub backwards and forwards if you don't want to select the entire clip you can use your mouse to click at the start and drag out to the right. This will create a yellow box of a specific size and this means that iMovie will only add this section of the shot to the timeline when you drag it above. When a clip is in the timeline you can edit the clip shorter by drawing a yellow box around the clip by clicking and dragging and then inside the box either right click or control click and choose trim to selection this will then trim the clip down to just the selection that you made once you have added all the clips in sequence to create your final animation you can use your mouse pointer to scrub through the animation and check that everything is in the correct order. You can also press the space bar on your keyboard to start the movie playing from the point that you are currently at. You can press space bar again to stop. If you want to adjust the colors or the brightness of any of the clips in your timeline, you can move your pointer over the clip you want to adjust and click on the cog icon. This will bring up a selection of options which you can choose. For adjusting colors, I'm going to choose video adjustments. This will open what's known as an inspector window. In here we can adjust things such as the exposure, the brightness, the contrast, 
and also the saturation of the clip. If you make an adjustment which you don't want to keep, you can choose Revert to Original. You can also choose an option called Auto, which is where iMovie will try to automatically adjust the colours within the shot. When you're finished, you can click Done. In Chapter 2, I talk about setting up cameras for animation and how important it is to try and manually set the white balance on the camera. This is where you show the camera what the colour white looks like so that it can make sure that all the other colours are the correct colour. Within iMovie, we can adjust this afterwards. Choose a clip that you want to adjust the white balance and go to the cog icon to bring up the options for the video adjustments. At the bottom you will see an option called white point. This is where you can tell iMovie what the colour white is meant to look like. In this shot, you can see that the white balance is a little off. However, with this window open, if I move my cursor over the preview window, you will see that the arrow turns into an eyedropper. I can use the eyedropper to click on what is meant to be the colour white, and iMovie will adjust it accordingly. Then I can click Done to save this setting. iMovie also gives you the option to add video filters to any of the clips in your timeline. To add an effect to a clip, move your pointer over the clip and choose the cog icon. Then choose Clip Adjustments. In the Inspector window, you will see an option called Video Effect. Click on the button which says None and you will be presented with a selection of different video effects. As you move your cursor over the different effects you will see that they are automatically applied to the clip in the preview window so that you can preview what the effect will look like. Choose the one that you want and then click Done. If you want to remove the effect which you applied, you can go to the cog icon again and choose clip adjustments and beside video effect, click on the button and choose none. Then you can click done. When editing all your shots together to create a final animation, it's common to use a cut to go from one shot to another. However, you might find that you want to add an actual transition to go between the shots in your animation. To do this in iMovie, you can click on the Transition Browser icon. This will bring up a lot of different transitions which you can insert between the shots in your timeline. The most common transition is called a cross dissolve and we can click this and drag it into our timeline between two of the shots. Then if we press play you will see that the shot cross dissolves into the next shot. If you want to remove a transition you can click on it and press delete on your keyboard. To hide the transition browser again, simply click on the transition browser icon. To add titles and credits to your animation, you can click on the title browser icon. This will bring up a selection of predefined titles and credits which you can add in the timeline. Select the style of title that you want to add to your animation and simply click and drag it to the start or end of your timeline. When you do this, iMovie will ask you what style of background you want for your text. There are quite a few to select from and I'm going to choose green. To edit the text for the title, go to the preview window 
and click on the text. Now you can highlight and edit the text as you wish. Once you're finished, click inside the timeline window. Now you can press play and see the title. To add credits to your animation, go to the title browser window and choose the style of credits that you want. Click and drag this into the timeline at the end of your animation. Then choose the type of background that you want for your credits. Go to the preview window and change the text to say what you want. You can change the size and the type of font that are used in the credits by clicking on the button Show Fonts. This will bring up an option of different fonts which you can use and you can also change the color of the font along with the font size. Then you can click Done. Once you've finished, click inside the timeline window again and you can press play. To hide the titles browser window simply click on the titles browser icon. These are just some of the basic things you can do to edit your final animation together using iMovie on OS X. As I said at the start of the chapter it's definitely worth spending time experimenting with pieces of software to see what you can come up with. In the chapter on claymation, I talked about how when you are animating using a down shooting setup or using a rostrum, that the image will be upside down and how this is easy to rectify when you're editing your animation together. In this example in iMovie, I have a shot from the cutout and silhouette animation chapter. Here you can see that the original footage is upside down. This is very easy to correct. Select your footage in the timeline and then choose the Crop tool. When you choose the Crop tool you will see a lot of options along the top of the preview window. In the middle there are two arrows. Simply click one of these twice and this will rotate the footage to be the correct way around. Then simply click Done. 